changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with your daily dose of Chicken Soup for the Soul inspiration to make you simply happy. It's Wow Wednesday, and today we're going to talk turkey. And by that, I mean we're going to talk turkey disaster. Because who hasn't had a turkey disaster at Thanksgiving or Christmas? Those turkeys are hard to buy, hard to defrost, hard to prepare, hard to carve. They're hard to handle in every other way you can think of. So today I have a cautionary tale for you. But it's a tale that also has made me laugh every time I've read it. Lori Garallo Secor tells us, that she arrived at her mom's house the day before Thanksgiving, and she got right to work, making side dishes, her famous banana split cake, her stuffing. And it was nice and cold, and so they were able to use the garage as a second refrigerator. And as they finished cooking each dish, they put it on the trunk of Lori's parents' car. And I don't know about you, but I do that too. Every Christmas Eve when we have a large family gathering, I don't have room in our refrigerator for everything. So I always end up with lots of dishes and platters on top of my car, which I figure is a good place because it's cold enough. And I figure if there are any mice that are wintering in our garage, they're not going to climb up the side of the car. So they put stuff out on the car and then Lori helped her mom get the 23 pound turkey ready. They washed it in salt water, they put it in a roasting pan, and then Lori carried it out to the garage and put it on the trunk of the car with everything else. Lori's dad came into the kitchen and mumbled something about going to the store, but Lori and her mom weren't really paying any attention. They were working too hard. But a few hours later, when they finished the stuffing and Lori carried it out to the garage to put on the car, she was shocked to find that the car wasn't there, the car on which they had put all the food. Lori couldn't believe it. She looked out at the driveway, and then she started screaming, because there was her famous banana split cake, upside down on the driveway and definitely split. Then she looked farther out to the road, and she saw all the side dishes they had made lying on the pavement. And then it got worse because there was no sign of the turkey or the roasting pan. So Lori went on a turkey hunt. She got in her own car, and she drove about three miles down the road looking for the turkey. But she gave up. There was no turkey. She went home, and she said to her mom, I didn't see the turkey, so Dad must have noticed it and put it inside the car. But the females in the house were in shock. It was Lori, her mom, and her aunt. And they were wondering, how could Lori's dad have been in such a fog that he walked by a huge turkey and all those other dishes sitting on the trunk of the car? The car was backed into the garage, so he would have had to walk right by them to get to the driver's seat. Lori called her four sisters and told them what her father had done. And they started laughing hysterically, imagining their father driving around with the turkey clinging to the back of the car. About an hour later, Dad pulled into the driveway and walked into the kitchen, holding the turkey still inside the roasting pan. He said the turkey had stayed on the trunk of the car for nine miles before it flew off when he made a turn. He finally saw it when it flew off the car. He slammed on the brakes in the middle of an intersection, jumped out to rescue the turkey, which, according to him, only bounced once. And he also found the roasting pan. He stuck them back in the car, and then on his drive home, He found the lid of the roasting pan a few miles from the house. So Lori and her mom took this poor, damaged 23-pound turkey, plucked the road gravel out of it, gave it another saltwater bath, and placed it back in the slightly dented roasting pan. And this time, Lori put the pan on a shelf in the garage. Her sister showed up with all the ingredients to remake all the side dishes And they got back to work, shaking their heads over their father's ability to overlook a car covered in Thanksgiving dishes. Lori tells us in her story, which is called Dinner to Go, that this happened about 10 years ago and that this will always be her family's favorite Thanksgiving dinner. 
And she also wants us to know that her father justifies the fact that he lives in a fog and was able to walk right past a gigantic turkey without seeing it by explaining that he lived with and raised five daughters. So that story was published in our book called Chicken Soup for the Soul, Family Matters, which is filled with funny stories like that about family get-togethers and disasters. And if you want to learn more about it, you can go to our website, chickensoup.com. Tomorrow, I'll be back for Thoughtful Thursday. And we're going to talk about a woman who was at the end of her rope, but decided to hold one last Thanksgiving. I promise you something good happens in this story. I'm Amy Newmark. Thanks for listening to the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast today. If you want to hear what else is going on at Chicken Soup for the Soul, follow me on Twitter, where my handle is at Amy Newmark. <laughs>